This is Season 2, Episode 16 of my Modular Journey, and today we're going to take a look at the Geranalog Filter 8 module. The Geranalog Filter 8 came in with the April 7th shipment of new things. It costs around $295, and let me give you just a general description. Check out the, uh, the statement <laughs> statement here, cutting edge. Uh, filter 8 is a multi-mode filter. Uh, an eight-phase oscillator, uh, audio or LFO, and one hell of an amazing sound design tool when coupled with other modules in the rack. Uh, starting with the interface, I'll just really cover the interface real quick. Uh, up at the top is a frequency range switch, which is low for low frequency oscillators or audio for audio rate uh, modulations. Uh, there, is a, there is a coarse and fine tuning, which when related to other, other filters, I'm finding uh, coarse is really like cut off and with of course resonance down here. So there's a resonance knob, cut off knob called coarse. You can fine tune the coarse. Uh, in the center here of course is the resonance knob and then there is this uh, resonance modulation CV point here. So, and this is its attenuator. So you can actually attenuate the resonance, which is great. That's something I couldn't do with some of my other modules. I could not attenuate the resonance. On the left is a volt per octave FM input, which can be used to play the filter like an oscillator uh, at one volt per octave. Also on the left and right are exponential and linear FM inputs, respectively, uh, and their attenuators. So again, you can CV, throw a voltage into here, attenuate how much linear you want to apply or how much exponential you want to apply to the filters. Uh, there's also this AC switch on this side here. The AC switch will, uh, will reject any DC offset at low frequencies. And I believe this is to help keep things clean when oscillating. So I guess if it's down, it allows DC. If you put it up, it's AC only. Uh, two other switches are comp on the left for gain compensation, which normalizes the eight phased outputs, and then the hold on the right, which is used for uh, LFO mode in LFO mode to freeze the current positions of the of the eight outputs. This can also be controlled via CV gate here uh, for interesting results. Towards the bottom, over here on the left side, are these two input jacks, and Important thing I, I'm learning about this is these are not stereo inputs because there is no stereo output on this filter, unlike Zagreb or Popple. This is a single single signal in to be outputted outputted singly in one of these or all of these eight phase outputs. Uh, if you put a second signal in, these two get blended together and then it comes out of these uh, these eight outputs here. Uh, the, the really interesting part about this here is, of course, the self-patching. If you come out of one of these filter outputs here and feed it back in, that's when all bets are off. Uh, continuing on, the eight-phased outputs, hence the name Filter 8, uh, which can be in LFO mode. You can see there's 45, 90, so each one of them is 45 degrees off. 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, and 360. So I'll show that on the scope in a little bit here, but basically that just means the, the phase of the, of the sign is offset by 45 degrees all the way down in LFO mode. Uh, in filter mode, we have low pass 1, 2, 3, and 4, which correspond to, of course, to negative 6, uh, negative 12, negative 18, and negative 24 dB per octave. Uh, and then a high pass 1, a, a band boost and notch, which I've never heard of before, uh, phase shifting, and then a band pass 24. And let's not forget ping. Ping. Ping that thing. Why did I choose filter eight? I mean, come on. It says it is a cutting edge modular masterpiece for only $295. Uh, I did set out to explore filters in season two, which by the way, this is my last filter uh, so far. <laughs> uh, and when I came across the filter eight, it was showing up in many, many racks and demos and tutorials. And so this one kind of felt like a no brainer. I had to wait a little bit for one of them to become available, but thank you once again to Perfect Circuit for draining my wallet in a timely manner. How I plan to use 
filter eight uh, will be of course um, as as a filter or probably for me more likely as an LFO uh, because it has these eight phased LFO outputs. I don't I don't know how I could not use that. I mean that's that's pretty amazing. That that compares up with Oct and Batumi as far as LFOs go. Um, another another thing I'd probably do with it is probably a lot of the self patching. Or when I get into filtering, uh, do some self patching and make some make some really squealy noises with it. So that's probably how I plan to use it as well. Uh, or use the eight LFOs coming out of filter eight to mangle other filters, which is a, a part of my demo that I'll show up here. So let's get it in the rack, uh, mounted in the rack and fire it up because I'm pretty excited to show this one off. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty neato. All right, filter eight is in the rack. Let's get some power to things. For this first really quick piece, uh, just showing the, the uh, 90, 180, 270, and 360 phases of, of the outputs for LFO. We're in low mode. We got resonance cranked. Hold is turned off, compensation is turned on. What you see here on the scope is wherever the green trace is, that's the 90 degree angle. And then there's the 180, 270, and 360. And you can see how the peaks are offset by a little bit. So if I take the yellow one out of 360 and put it into 225, for an example, you can see where the, the yellow one now moves behind the red because it's, it is now in the phase behind the red. So. That's the only thing I really wanted to mention that I don't recall anyone else really covering in detail. I watched a lot of videos on this. So just to understand phasing and why phasing is important. And the reason why this is important is when I go to, to modulate other filters, for instance, which I'll show here in a moment, having them out of phase a little bit really moves things around in the stereo field. And that's kind of what, I'm, what I really want for, at least for filtering or panning or anything like that. So speaking of that, let's let's let me wire something up over here on the right. Finally, we're going to take these four phases out over to here, over here to these uh, filters. And to do that, I'm going to come out of data just so we can keep an eye on things. So I'm, these are really coming from filter eight via data. The first two, uh, green and blue. Green and blue are going to go into Zagreb. So let's listen to what those, what that filter sounds like first. Get my loop going. So now you can see the oscillator oscillating. Put some offset in there. If I were to take this and make a stereo pair out of it, let's do that. You can hear it manipulating the spread of Zagreb. And that's using these LFOs coming out of filter eight. I'm gonna do the same thing to, to the first two voices. Let's turn those guys up, turn down Zagreb real quick. So now let's set these up similarly. So now I've changed the left to be modulated by the, the, the 270 degree down here. And then the right is by the 360 degree. So now we're, these are being modulated by these two. And everybody together sounds like this. I'm gonna plug an attenuator in real quick to change some of the envelope shapes. So the whole point of this is to show you what this what it sounds like in the stereo field. And that's it. So that is pretty much exactly how I plan to use uh, filter eight in the LFO, LFO mode anyway. Uh, let me unpatch a bunch of stuff here because now we're gonna switch over to audio mode. 
and hopefully make some noise. So for the next part of this, I'm just gonna really quickly show the audio mode of, of filter eight. Uh, again, and the only other thing I really wanna do with it, aside from filtering, of course, will be doing audio. And uh, this is now just the low pass six dB coming out uh, in audio mode, full resonance. Uh, but what happens now, of course, if you take a patch out of the exponential FM and take like the low pass four out uh, feed it back in and then start twisting it Now this is the output of the high pass Minus six or high pass six. So if we move it over to the eight or the twelve you see how it starts to become a little bit more of a, of a saw in a way. And here's a, a curved saw. But jumping down to like high pass, there's another curve the other way, opposite of this. And then the bandpass notch is another saw. I think it's the opposite of this. So this is ramp down, this would be ramp up. Then here's another upside down inverted curve. And then here's curvy on both sides. So where you're putting this, this is of course negative and positive I mean, I just love the sound of this though. Listen, listen to this. That's badass. <laughs> I love that. Uh, one last thing, I think, from the manual. Uh, I'm going to pull something from the manual real quick, and that is to actually patch uh, not into exponential, but back into uh, input here. But if I take an input out of, uh, out of an oscillator, like let me grab one of the saws, put it into number one, or put it into the first input. Let's hear what that sounds like first. Hang on, let me uh, put this in here. Turn up the volume. Let me kill the resonance real quick, turn that all the way down, and just do cutoff. So this is the saw coming out of quad VCO, so it should sound like a saw. So this is going to get a little loud, possibly, so watch your ears. Um, I'm going to take a bandpass 4 out of here and, and feed it back in. And you can see, without even turning up the volume, you can see I'm about to go crazy. All right, so let's turn up the volume. So as a sound source, this could sound pretty interesting. If I start my sequence, turning down resonance.
My hook is turning really slow. Wow, look at that. Or taking from another LFO source like Modbox and sweeping. I think that's it. <laughs> the only thing I really didn't cover in this video is the filtering, and that's only because there's so many other videos on filtering. I just wanted to make a shit ton of noise with it, and that is what I can do. Uh, again, barely scratching the surface of all the things you can do here, but what a fantastic module. Uh, it looks absolutely beautiful, very sexy design. Uh, everything is accessible without bumping into everything else, like some other modules, you can't get in there. Uh, everything is spaced beautifully. Uh, all the functions are right here on the deck, including calibration uh, pots right here for, uh, for volt per octave and resonance. What a great little tool. This is a great tool. I, uh, yeah, I'm trying hard to not be an endorser, but man, uh, this is definitely a, uh, a good purchase. I'm going to have a lot of fun with Filter 8. So that's it for episode 16 on the Geranalog Filter 8. Coming up next... Finally, <laughs> the Dopefer A111-4 Quad Precision VCO that I've used in most of these videos for season two is finally going to get his episode and little little moment to shine. So uh, stay tuned for that.